Hey gang, we're in here. Welcome back to the Cade and another episode of Sports Saturday. We are at week 11 of our great what if scenario here on Sega Sports NFL 2K2. Can we build the New England Patriots dynasty of the first 20 years of the 21st century without the existence of one Tom Edward Bartholomew Aloysius Brady III? Well, so far, we're not doing bad. We are currently at 9-1. We got past the Buffalo Bills last week, and Robo sack himself, Rob Johnson. And now we're going to have quite easily our toughest test of the year because now we're going to have to go back home to Foxborough and take on the defending Super Bowl champion, St. Louis Rams, in what at, a t at the time, unbeknownst to a lot of people, Ended up being a preview of the Super Bowl that year. Of course, these two teams ended up meeting in Super Bowl 36. And the Patriots defeated the Rams 2017, kicking the dynasty off. But I fully expect, and I have to be realistic about this, that this could easily be the second loss we suffer during the season which again is going to be Hello, annoying but not unexpected we said it from the outset the goal was not to run the Sega table and go undefeated Network. the goal this was to see if we win a Dan super bowl with without King. tom brady we have drew bledsoe still as our NFL, quarterback and, and while he's no not been lighting the world on the fire there's still he's been doing well enough break any team season. to make sure that and we can pull out most of these games but these St. Louis Rams were the peak of what was known at the time as the greatest show on turf. And they have five, if not six, Hall of Famers on this squad that we are going up against. Starting with quarterback Kurt Warner, running back Marshall Falk, wide receivers Isaac Bruce and Torrey Holt, left tackle Orlando Pace, he's a Hall of Famer, and then cornerback Aeneas Williams, who is also a Hall of Famer. This team went 14-2 and on the season under first-year head coach Mike Martz. After the Rams won the Super Bowl in 2000, uh, Dick Vermeil, who was the coach for that team, decided to leave. And then he would ultimately finish his career as the head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs. And when these two teams met on November 18th, it was actually week 10 of that season, St. Louis won that game 24-17. They would lose the following week to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers by the same score, 24-17, but that was the last game they would lose for the rest of the season. They ran the table for the next six weeks, beating the Falcons, the 49ers, the Saints, the Panthers, the Indianapolis Colts, and the Atlanta Falcons again. So this squad that we are going up against is no slouches to be found. So this should be a really interesting game. And we're not playing in the rain like we did last week against Buffalo. We're under cloudy, but non-precipitous skies here in Foxborough. And that is something I've been asked a lot over the years. Why is it that the New England Patriots play in the... They don't play in Boston. Why do they play in a suburb about 30 minutes away? And if you know anything about New England, if you know anything about how small it is and also how compact the city of Boston is, it's not a small city, but it's a 400-year-old city. Uh, trying to get around it and trying to have something big enough to fit a football stadium in that city is just not feasible. It was never feasible, which is why when they built the original home of the Patriots, it was called Sullivan Stadium. And that's actually where we are playing these games. This was one of the last years that Sullivan Stadium was in existence before it got torn down and the great megalith of Gillette Field with its six Lombardi trophies in the case now stands there. And Warner tried to flush himself out of the pocket and immediately got sacked on that one. Man, they're getting their helmets handed to them. So let me go right to the guy who, if he can break off the right tackle, will put me on my butt. The William McGinnis is right there to lend a hand. So the way that the Patriots beat the Rams in the Super Bowl, 
And if you're not old enough to have remembered it, I am old enough to remember it, and I remember it very well. Uh, because it was something I never thought I was going to see happen in my lifetime. But even though it was Tom Brady's first Super Bowl, what it came down to was the defense stopping the greatest show on turf. And Bill Belichick and defensive coordinator Romeo Cornell's plan was really simple. Hit everybody who's moving. Do not give Kurt Warner time to get a throw off. Do not give him open receivers to look at. And the thing people don't realize about the greatest show on turf, and Kurt Warner has talked about this many a time, the reason why it worked was not necessarily because of the genius of Mike Martz, although he knew how to utilize the weapons he had, is that the greatest show on turf worked entirely because of running back Marshall Falk. Marshall Falk, who is, again, a Hall of Famer and one of the best overall running backs of all time, he has that moniker because he could both obviously run, but he was excellent as a pass-catching receiver at various points in the game. And it made it almost impossible for defenses to figure out where the ball was going to go. Because if you had Marshall Falk open in the flat, like they tried to do on that first drive, and you sent guys to cover him, that inevitably opened up somebody downfield, Torrey Holt, Isaac Bruce, Ricky Prohl, whomsoever. And that's why they were able to set a then NFL record in terms of points on offense on their way to winning the Super Bowl in 2000. It's all about getting that yardage. It's put this offense in very good position. But fortunately, we're in a good position now. We'll, we're able to run the ball against them because I think they're assuming, like we would against them, that we're going to try and go to the air more often than we are. But our ground game has very much been our bread and butter this whole season. Picked up a handful of yards, but those were critical yards. Well, if but we are going to have to go to the air at some really point, so why not try it now? Twenty yards to do it. First and ten. Yeah. So we're at the 16-yard line. Swatted, knocked down. I got rushed a little bit because there was somebody coming off the strong side. Smart play from where I'm sitting. All right, let's try that again. Different play this time. Oh, and I tried to get the ball off, but they got to me for the sack. London Fletcher. Great all-around linebacker. Celebrate a little after that sec. You can't coach hits like that. And that's the thing you got to be careful about in playing football games like that. You're so sure that you're going to be able to get the ball away. And then that extra second, you're just, you're meat. It's third and 15. Oh, it was tipped and he caught it. Wow. I was about to be very nonplussed about that. But fortunately, Johnson tipped it, came back and caught it, and still had the presence of mind to get the first down. That was much more luck than skill, but I will take it because now we're knocking on the door of the end zone. And we're in as Redmond fights his way across the goal line for the first touchdown of the day. With about 90 seconds to go in the first quarter. So Vinatieri will come on for the point after. It is good. So it is seven zip here in the first. Seven plays, 41 yards in two minutes, 19 seconds. Well, I got a minute. 
Just a friendly reminder, be sure to tune in for Sucker Punch Sunday tomorrow where we'll play a classic fighting or fighting platform-based game from the 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th generation. And be sure to tune in to our ongoing playthrough of Super Robot Wars 3 where we have new episodes being posted every Monday and Wednesday. So let's see what Kurt Warner and company can do on their second drive. They weren't able to really get things moving, but it is one where you just, you know inevitably they're going to put something together. So you can't really let your foot off the gas. And just like that is exactly what we wanted to do is they were looking for Tory Holt across the field. And Jones was right there to lay the heck on him, hit on him and make sure he did not complete that pass. We see the little animated football, those little thin arms coming out of it. We got very interesting way of putting. Thank you. Ball on the 38. He rolled out again and he got sacked. Willie McGinnis right no there. To run, baby. No place to pass to either. Second time he's reached game. the quarterback today. And I don't know if it's going to be worthwhile to have Warner. He's not a scramble passer. That's the weird thing. Kurt Warner was your classic drop back passer. It's third and about 13. He was the sort of guy who could sit in the pocket, wait for a play to develop. And because he had played in so many different leagues and so many different places before joining the Rams, one of the places that he was with was uh, in the Arena Football League playing for the Iowa Barnstormers, which I bring it up because they still have one of the coolest helmets I've ever seen any football team have. If you look them up online, you can go to a website called The Helmet Project, and it's a guy who had way too much free time on his hands. But some, what he did was he did a complete catalog of every professional football league, American football, I should say, uh, as well as college football, and has kept a, a basically an encyclopedia of every football helmet every team in the pros in college have ever had. Like I said, way too much time on his hands, but as a resource, it's awesome. Back in the day when I was still working in journalism and doing covering sports, and I needed to do things like uh, design newspapers or magazines, that was always my go-to to be able to pull up uh, helmets that I could attach to the pages. Pick up the first down as Redmond's finding a lot of room on the ground. We're going to take advantage of that as really much as we can. And that will be the last play That's of the first quarter. The the first so, quarter, one down, three to go, and it is still 7 nothing us. But like I said, with Warner having played in arena football, arena football was 50 yards, not 100 yards, because they played indoors. That's why it was called Arena League. And because the game was so much faster, he had to learn how to work that sort of speed, and it translated when he finally got his chance to take over as the quarterback for the Rams when starter Trent Green went down in 2000 during the preseason. That the rest is truly history. It's second and nine. Ooh, I threw in a triple coverage. I'm lucky that didn't get picked. But they were coming, so I had to get rid of it quick. I wasn't really keen to throw into double coverage either, dude, but it's not like the Rams gave me much of a chance on that. 
All right, so it's double coverage on Johnson. Well, we're underneath the Redmond. I didn't realize it was going that way, and we're going to be short of the first down, but we should be within field goal range. Stymied midfield. Yeah, when they really needed to dig themselves out of a third and long situation. So this will be a 25 plus 17, a 42 yarder for Adam Vinatieri. That should be long enough. Kick is away, and it is good. We got an injury on the field. I'm curious to see who that was. But it's 10 nothing. Yep, you're far enough away that things can start to go wrong if you don't account for it. But not so far that your teammates are going to forgive you if you muff it. <laughs> The Patriots are in control, but it's far from over. They're now leading to the tune of 10. And that one almost went out of the end zone. Lines up for the kickoff. Hakeem rounds it in the end zone. The Rams will start out. All right, so let's see what the Rams can do on their third drive. It's a two possession game, but I have not pulled away that much. And Warner scrambles right out of the pocket. Warner brilliantly extended his run by They haven't his used Marshall Falk for pretty much alive. anything so far in this game. game. You know, some people think that good stiff arms are about power. That really, really stymies me. You get one of the best all around backs in NFL history. Sitting right behind you. Now they find the hand it off and they just hung him out to dry. I think they try to draw play there, and Willie McGinnis is having none of it. It's all about perseverance, Dan. Oh, I think they even got knocked back a bit. What a blow to this offense's morale. <laughs> they can't let that stand. Expect them to come back strong. All right, third and six. Ace backfield with Falk. So I think my placeholder for uh, Vinatieri yeah, just got knocked out of the game with a concussion. Because that was Damon Heward of the Northwest Hewards. He and his brother Brock were well-known collegiate quarterbacks in the Pacific Northwest when I was uh, living there when I was younger. Nice starting point for this drive. The special teams gave them decent field position. The Patriots are on the field after the pump. They're 10-0. All right, let's see if we can add a little bit more distance between us and the Rams. The Rams is not going down easy. But I gotta be careful. I've already got one injury. I don't wanna have to deal with another one. Second and six is where you're getting close to the two minute warning. So I wanna get this play off before that whistle. Oh, and I got tripped up and went backwards. Not what I wanted. We've reached the two minute warning. The Patriots have a bit of breathing room. 10-0. All right, third and nine. Got to convert through the air here. And we found Burn Emanuel first down. And we are in St. Louis territory. Even better. Burn Emanuel delivers a big play with a monster catch. That's a first down with some style. Ball on the 36. Still on his feet, close to a first down. So if anything, I can take advantage of the clock right. running down. And they've got time for the pass if they want to. They are in the driver's seat. It's second and two. If we can get close enough for a touchdown before the half, that would be great. Well, we got the first down. 
We're gonna have to go to the air here, so we better hurry. To convert. They know they can count on him to make those crucial conversions. Nothing flashy, just good football. The clock is at 55. Ooh, I thought I had him there, but got knocked down. But it stops the clock. Threw the football into double coverage there. He's got a good arm, but I can't see how he would have made it through. Yeah, I'll bet he could have found greener pastures elsewhere. The clock shows 49 seconds left. All right, it's so a double coverage on the outsides. Oh, that got knocked down. He said, Emmanuel ran into my... Really took a chance with that throw. Ran Two into my tight there, end, which is off. not what he I wanted. He obviously thought that, uh, you know, he can thread a needle and get to his receiver. But I'll tell you, that is a big risk. A risk he didn't need to take, in, in my humble opinion. The clock reads 46. All right. So we need a first down here. We're going to be looking at another field goal. <laughs> and knocked down. Incomplete. The smart play here on fourth is the field goal. Walk All right, so we have about another 43-yarder. Adam ace the first one. Can he give us another one? And we're going to give the ball to start the second half. It's away, it's away and it is good. So I'll make it 13 nothing. Thanks to another 42 yard field goal by the future Hall of Famer, Adam Vinatieri. And before anybody comes at me and says he doesn't deserve to be in the Hall, man, I think we're at a stage where we've finally acknowledged that kickers and punters and special teams players can and should be in the Hall of Fame if they did enough to warrant getting in. We look at offense and defense, but it's, it is a three-pronged game, and it is called football. So you may not like the fact that there are kickers in the world, but somebody's got to kick the damn thing. And Adam Vinatieri can rest easy knowing he's one of the best clutch kickers of all time. Warner's only one of five for three yards. So we have absolutely stifled the greatest show on turf through one half of football. 32 seconds left. But I mean, Devin Hester got into the Hall of Fame this past year. Just a couple of months ago, in fact. Because he'll likely go down as the greatest kick returner in history. So they finally go out to Falk. They're close to a first down. Fumble! Except the Rams recovered it. David Nugent stepped up when his team needed it to stop the drive. We should have grabbed that. That could have been six if we had been able to pick that ball up. So they'll punt it away. And we'll signal for the fair catch because there's no point returning it. We'll go to the locker room up two scores, 13-0. And then we've held the Rams to three total yards of offense in one half of football. What is Mike Martz thinking? That makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, my defense is good. There's no reason why it should be that good against this team. So we'll take it about our four, and Redmond will bring it back. And decent returning up to the 25. Patriots have had their best moments today when they've moved the football on the ground. They should continue with that game plan. The Patriots take the field to open up the second half. Now we can, if we can score on this drive, the way things are going, we may very well end up putting this game away. That's him from going anywhere. Nice tackle. Mark Fields, Fields right really there on a good stop. Team, Dan. He shut down that play like Elliot Ness closing down a Chicago speakeasy. Ball on the 25. Oh, 
Oh, and I got sacked again. London Fletcher. I try to roll out. And Drew is about as mobile as Warner actually is. No, and I'll tell you, it's got to be frustrating for an offense to get railroaded so far back like that. How, how do they recover? Well, the key is not to worry about the last play and just keep your focus on the next one. It's third and about 17. All right, we're going to need a big pickup here. Oh, and we got it. Johnson with a big catch in the first down. Ran the out and up perfectly. And this time, the offensive line provided protection. Red with a key block. Who did we need that? Otherwise, we were going to be punting from fairly deep on our own territory, which would have given the Rams potentially really good field position. And now they're coming for Redmond, so I think the Rams have decided if they want us to beat them, we're going to have to do it through the air. Ball on the 46. Oh, I should have gotten rid of that sooner. Bledsoe or uh, Troy Brown had the edge on that one and just did not have the ball before they shut the door. Oh, we're close to a first down. We're right there. Yeah, they've got to make headway on first and second downs. They're going for it. Uh, Let's go for it. Why not? We're six inches from the first down marker. And Edwards is going to pick up a whole lot more. When in doubt, go with your big man, and the fullback comes through as we are continuing to march downfield and moving the chain. That close to converting, there was no way this team was going to give it up. Tenacious. Ball on the 36. And we get it to Brown first down inside the red zone. Great Bly right there to deliver the hit. Had more interference than a cell phone in the Lincoln Tunnel, but he still managed to make the catch, Dan. It seemed really risky to throw to him with that much coverage, Peter, but apparently they knew he could get the job done with the right throw. <laughs> And Redmond is getting closer to 100 yards. He's at 71 and counting. So second and two for inside the 10. Still on his feet. If only J.R. Redmond was that tenacious in real life, what a career he could have had. him up before you can get past the line of scrimmage. London Fletcher really shined on that play, stopping them cold. Actually, I'd give the whole defense credit, Peter. They all did what they were supposed to, which left room for him to But strike. we have played excellent clock control football in this quarter, and now we just need to get into the end zone, which we do for the score. Second score of the day for J.R. Redmond. We're closing in on the end of the third quarter. It is 19-0 with the extra point coming up. And he will split the uprights on that one. So it's 20 to zip. That is the very model of a clock killing drive. 74 yards in four minutes and two seconds. Over 12 plays. We'll kick this one away. 
All right, so those taking about their nine. Murphy has it. Stops the return man in his tracks and makes the tackle. So we've been definitely winning the field position battle because they're starting with their own 27. We're starting around our own 42. Take the field for the first time this half, and we'll see how they respond to that last touchdown. I'll be very curious to see if they made any offensive adjustments at all. They should. They're going to Marshall, and he's not getting very far. In fact, he loses a yard. That is an airtight defense, Dan. They're not letting a wishful thought get past the line of scrimmage. I think they're even driving them back a bit, Peter. That is great D. Yeah, you know, it's moments like Offset this. Offset eye formation. Will this offense rise? Under 30 seconds to go in third. Oh, man, if he had caught that, that could have been six. Isaac was so wide open. And that's exactly what you would expect to see the Rams do. Warner sitting back in the pocket, looking for a receiver. Somebody inevitably gets open. And if Isaac Bruce had caught that, I doubt we would have caught him. That should have been six right there. We got damn lucky on that play. <laughs> And this time they tried to go on the screen to Falk, and Buckley was all over it like a cheap suit. Well, Buckley took him down, ensuring that the offense would get no forward progress. In fact, I don't think they even got back to the line of scrimmage, Peter, and now it's fourth down. So that'll be the last play of the third quarter, and they will punt it away to start the fourth. The Patriots are serving up a shutout. Well, we got this one almost in the Ag Bay, barring the seemingly highly improbable. If they just scored that touchdown, I'd be looking at it a lot differently. Alright, so we first and ten at about where we usually start, right around our 47 yard line. The Patriots are on the field after the punt. They're up 20 0. So we really just need one more good clock sapping drive. Jared Ribbon only needs 14 yards for 100. I think we can do that. Second and four. Looks like they're coming with a blitz. Well, we're close to a first down again. Third and short. Third down. One yard to go. So third and one. On St. Louis's side of the field of the 45. There we go back to Edwards, and he's got the first down. As we have four spins of the clock to go. Four minutes left. Nice run. Send the tight end in motion. And Redmond close to a first down again. Second down, one yard to go. Second and one. I think that gave him a first, uh, yep, 100 yards and a first down. So he's at 104. So now that I got that out of the way. Oh, he got sacked again. I saw Rutledge and I was trying to get it to him, but Lewis was right there. Third time we've been sacked today. Well, that's not what I wanted.
But we'll close it on the two minute warning. And we're going to move up five yards as the Rams jump the gun. I'll take that. Ryan Pickett gets the call for encroachment. You know, it's all about positioning and trying to get an edge up on your opponent. All at the 29 yard line. All right. Let's see if we can complete one here. We got Emmanuel still on his feet down inside the 10 as we're getting close to the two minute warning. Great passes to his receivers. And here are the numbers to play. All right. So there's the whistle. Two minutes to go. Patriots defense has held and the offense has put up the points. So they lead 20 0. Redmond still moving and he's in for his third touchdown of the day. Brought it in with a solid no nonsense run to the end zone. Great play. I don't know if you call this no nonsense because he breaks one tackle, breaks another tackle, and spins his way in for six more. So this one has not gone anywhere near as I expected. I thought, I figured that St. Louis's offense would be a lot more aggressive at being able to put a lot more plays together. Now we can chalk that up to a couple of things. Like I said, our defense has done a really good job neutralizing Warner's weapons downfield. And they went really bizarre with a lot of their play calling in the first half, but I can only speculate that if we were playing on the next difficulty level, like we did in the Atlanta games, we would see a lot more. So I am actually going to try that really quick. So since we've got this game in the bag, I'm going to up this to pro and see what sort of a difference it makes. Because if the greatest show on turf shows up now in garbage time, because we're under two minutes to go, that will tell me volumes about the difficulty spikes in this game. So he completed it to Marshall. And back-to-back -back completion. Yep. Here comes the greatest show on turf. One-handed catch by Isaac Bruce. He couldn't catch a cold in the first half. Back underneath, close to a first down. The Warriors completed four consecutive passes. Make it five as they go back to Marshall. First down. That one was right there with coverage and we couldn't stop it. Third and inches. Incomplete as Ty Law was right there on Oz Hakeem. Yep, they're going to go for it. Why not? 17 seconds, 17 seconds to go. It's fourth and inches. Might as well. And they hand it off to Marshall and he gets the first down. But they don't use their timeouts and that is the end of the ball game. So... 
Despite the sudden arrival of the greatest show on turf with less than two minutes to go, we hang on, preserve the shutout, and beat the Rams 27-0. So, like I said, that tells me a lot about the difference in difficulty between the standard difficulty you get out of the box and when you up it. Because we realistically have, should have been dealing with that version of the Rams the whole game. But they, they dumbed it down enough that you had a scrambling Kurt Warner. They weren't handing it off to Marshall Falk. It's like, you're going to gift wrap this sucker to us if you're not too careful. But be that as it may, we moved to 10-1 on the season with the defeat of the Rams. And next week, we're going to have the New Orleans Saints coming to town up from the bayou. That should be a good one because I always have fun when I get a chance to play the Saints. So... But we'll get into that next week as we are at the end of Sports Saturday for this one. If you've been enjoying the content, you know the dr drill on that. I don't have to explain it to you. Again, be sure to tune in to Sucker Punch Sunday and tomorrow where we'll play a classic fighting or fighting platform-based game from the 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th generation. And, of course, be sure to follow along with our ongoing playthrough of Super Robot Wars 3. We have new episodes of that coming out Monday and Wednesday. And, by all means, check our archive. We've got a lot of other playthroughs from everything from Final Fantasy VI to Metal Gear, Metal Gear 1, Metal Gear so or Metal Gear 2, Metal Gear Solid, Legend of Zelda, uh, Diablo 1. We even have a Dark Souls 1 thrown in there. So uh, be sure to check that stuff out as well. Spread the word about us through social media on Instagram and threads at Runners Retrocade as we continue to build this channel and the community and make it bigger and better. My name is Ronan. It's been great to spend this sports Saturday with you. Be safe, be well, happy gaming, and stay cool out there. It is a hot Labor Day weekend and a lot of the world, including here, where it is a balmy 88 degrees. Uh, so I'm going to turn my fans on, get something cold to drink, and I will see you tomorrow for Sucker Fun Sunday. Bye.